Hello and welcome to part one of our tutorial on creating muzzle flash. In this tutorial, we'll look at creating realistic muzzle flash and smoke right inside Adobe After Effects using just the fractal noise effect. Import your footage of your actor with the gun into After Effects. There's my actor pretending to fire an Airsoft AK-47, doing a fairly okay job of creating some fake kick. And just to enhance that kick, what we'll actually do is we'll edit out one frame there. Make sure your layer is selected. Go to Edit, Split Layer, or you can do it with the keyboard shortcut if you like. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove one frame from the sequence, slip the timeline forward again, go forward to where he pretends to pull off the next shot, and again I want to remove a frame, I'm going to do it with a keyboard shortcut this time, shift command D, there it splits the layer, and this time I'm going to just remove two frames, which will give a slightly bigger looking kick. Um, and if I set my work area now and play the shot again, you'll see the result of that. So there you go, really just emphasizing the kick for a bit more realism. So let's get on to our muzzle flash. So I will start by adding layer new solid and I'll add a nice black solid. Click OK. To this I will apply the standard noise fractal noise effect. There you go. And what I'll start by doing is turning the contrast right up to 1000. And then I will also just take my brightness down a bit to get a bit more separation between all these white shapes. So what you want to start doing now is in this field of noise, all these random shapes, you want to look for one that you like as a shape for muzzle flash. So I just happen to like this one on the right hand side in the middle over here. So what I'll do is I'll zoom out on my comp just to make my life a bit easier when repositioning this noise. Um, and I will open up the transform panel and this offset target icon I will grab and just start dragging my noise across so that by the time I scale up this noise the shape that I like ends up roughly in the middle so as I start scaling it up you can see that shape shifts across oh there it goes past the middle but I'll keep scaling it up it's now off screen but I know it's there so I'll grab my position and just move this noise across until the shape I like is roughly centered. So there it is. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to turn up the complexity for this noise to get some more detail around the edges here. Um, so if I go down or up here to the fractal noise settings for complexity, I'll double that to 12. And bang, there you go. Nice detail around the edges. So very happy with that. Now it's time to just isolate this muzzle flash shape. So I will grab the pen tool up here and I will trace around the shape that I like, just roughly. Don't worry about being too precise with this. Um, and I'll actually cut through this section here and then come around Sorry, I don't know what that was in the background. <laughs> um, there we go, shape closed. I'll open up these mask properties, the property for feather. And I will just create a little bit of feathering on that mask. And then I'll set this transfer mode to add. And that knocks out the black. And there we go, we've got a muzzle flash shape. Next thing I'll do is I'll just remove, uh, I will move its anchor point with the anchor point tool. So sort of back here where the flare would originate from out of the muzzle. And then I'll move this whole muzzle flash into position at the end of the barrel from the AK. Um, just out of interest, I've chosen to do this project with the AK-47 um, just for simplicity's sake because it creates a nice big simple flash. Um, but if you decided to do an M4 based weapon, um, you would obviously be creating a star shaped muzzle flash. But we'll just stick with the AK for now. So I will just rotate it down a little bit. There we go. So I will start by adding 
a blur, radial blur. And what I want to do is the center point of this radial blur, move it back here so it shares that anchor position, and change the type to zoom. There you go, and you see what that gives you is kind of a motion blur blast effect. Then after our radial blur, we will apply effect. Just make sure you have your layer selected. Um, CC toner is what we are looking for. It's quite hard to find in this menu, so I prefer to just go across here to effects and presets, whatever's in there, remove it, and search for toner. There it pops up, CC toner. Drag that across onto your muzzle flare. And by default, these are the colors. So we want to change our highlights to a kind of a fiery pale yellow, probably something in that vein there. And we want to change our mids, which will be these sections around the edge. We want to give them a bit of a fiery red. So probably somewhere, somewhere there. We can come back and adjust this later, so don't be too worried about being precise. Um, then the next step is we will apply a glow. And again, I always find it hard to find glow here. So I'm just going to search for it in the effects palette. Glow. I don't know, it's down the bottom here. Stylize glow. There it is. Wow, and you can see that's made quite a difference. So we need to just tweak some of these settings. So I'll start by changing my glow radius to be much bigger so we get a bit of a glow coming off this lens flare. I'll take the glow threshold down a fraction, probably somewhere there. And I'll take the glow intensity down as well. So probably somewhere about there where the, the inside of your flare is sort of turning white hot and you can't see through it but towards the edges you still have a little bit of this pale yellow color so you want to be somewhere in that kind of territory and then one extra little detail i like to add is the front of the flare here as it gets further away from the muzzle can start to feather off so i'll just grab a square mask i'll zoom out a bit for this just draw a big square mask covering the front of our flare you see this mask is now revealing more of our fractal noise layer so we want to set this mask to subtract then we open up our mask attributes and turn up the feathering and there you can see the front of our flare is kind of feathering off um, I find that a bit too extreme I also think our mask needs to shift to right a little bit something like that and let's up the feather amount there we go. Let's just zoom back in here. So what I want to do now is I want this flare to be one frame in duration and I want it to be the frame just ahead of our kick. So I'll just shorten that layer to be one frame in duration. And if I RAM preview this, you can see what we are getting. There we go. One flare. Quite convincing, I think. Um, I think it needs to be scaled up a little bit. So. This is the great thing about moving our anchor point to where the barrel is. We can scale this flare up to the size we like and it should remain roughly in position. I think I need to rotate it down a little more. There we go. Maybe move it up a fraction. Happy with that. So the next step is now to create the light effect that this flare would be casting on our actor and also a little bit of environmental lighting. So let's start with our actor. So what we'll do is we'll take this layer that is the video footage of our actor with the gun, duplicate it, also trim it to just be one frame in duration and it's in line with the muzzle flash. Apply a levels to this layer, color correction levels. We want to drag our highlights here on the right hand side so they really start to pop. And drag our shadows a little bit right so they crush. And then you want to Grab the CC toner effect off the muzzle flash layer at the top. I'll tell you what, while we're at this, let's just name this flash so we don't lose it going forward. Flash. And I'll also rename this layer here, which is our actor. I will rename to something like dude flash or actor flash, whatever you prefer. So select the flash layer, grab the CC toner effect, edit copy or Control c or Apple C, select your dude layer or your gunman layer, paste it, 
there we go and then you want to set this layer to add there it is and then the next step is we need to just mask off our actor to be receiving light in just the areas we want so in this case I'll grab the pen tool I want his face or at least sort of half of his face to be receiving light um, I maybe want this arm over here and the strap of the gun this side of his body to be receiving flash so I'll draw a very rough mask around it all there we go and then I probably also want this hand here to be receiving a little bit of flash so there we have our three areas that are being illuminated by the flash so we'll open up this layers mask properties and mask one which is the face his face we'll, I'm just gonna hide these masks so I can see what's going on there we go hidden um, and for mask one I'm gonna just up the feather amount to create a nice blend then same thing for mask number two which as you remember was this side of his body also up the feather amount just to get a nice blend going and same thing for mask 3 which is his hand it's up the feather amount also I feel his hand looks a bit too well illuminated so I will take the opacity of that mask right down so that it's just catching the smallest amount of light and also now looking at our illuminated man I feel he looks a bit too orange so let's access the colors on CC toner Let's change our highlights to a nice bright yellow and our midtones as well to a slightly yellower shade probably somewhere there would be good if I just go back one frame forward one frame back one frame forward one frame you start to see the effect that's having now next we want to add some kind of environmental lighting I mean our guy is just in a dark black room um, so quite easy in this example so I'll just create a new solid and it will be kind of that same yellow orange that the flash is Maybe a bit more orange say OK I'll place it just above our active flash layer trim it to be one frame in duration and I'll just I'll set that to screen and I'll drop that layer's opacity to something that feels about right something like there I suppose it's at 12% maybe let's go up to 15% and now if I do a RAM preview of this we can see what we're getting there we go quite a nice convincing muzzle flash right so let's get on to the smoke so I'm gonna make a new composition composition new I'm just gonna call this layer uh, this composition smoke to make it 10 seconds in length for good luck say okay layer new solid another black solid and again we will apply fractal noise to this effect noise fractal noise and immediately I can see I would just like to scale my smoke up so somewhere around there and then I want to keyframe the evolution on the smoke so I will come down here to evolution first frame set a keyframe go to the end of my comp and I want the evolution to make a couple of rotations um, and you probably want to try about if your comp is 10 seconds then you probably want about five rotations so however long your comp is you know if your comp is five seconds then you do half of that two and a half rotations in our case it's 10 seconds so I'll try five rotations and as I scrub through this you can see what that's doing it's just evolving the fractal noise or the smoke then the next step I want to do is generally smoke tends to rise upward so I will keyframe a position here at the first frame under transform um, offset turbulence I will keyframe it here step forward to the end of my composition grab this offset or grab it here and just move it upwards and then if I, if I do a quick RAM preview of this for you, you can see what we're getting. We're getting this kind of very basic undulating smoke that rises upwards. Now the next step is to add a bit of variation to here, again with 
our favorite displacement effect effect distort turbulent displace and you can see what that does to the smoke it just creates kind of this nice warping undulating effect which I will size up a fraction probably around there and again I'll keyframe the evolution on this and this evolution should be about half the evolution of your noise so our noise rotated five times in 10 seconds so I'll keyframe our turbulent displace evolution here go to the end of our comp and evolve it let's say two and a half or maybe three times now if I RAM preview this you can see what you're getting right looking at this I can immediately see I need more movement in my smoke in terms of it traveling upwards so I'll go to the end of my comp access this offset turbulence and let's just push it up in the Y to be about double what it was and also looking at my turbulent displace it was maybe a bit too hectic so let's just take the amount down to about 35 instead of 50 let's let's uh, RAM preview this looking better let's just go to bigger scale again I think the scale on our turbulent displace can be even bigger great so this is going to give us a really good basic smoke layer that we can mask and work with for our barrel smoke and our breech smoke so let's go back to our gun comp we're going to want smoke to emit from the barrel here so take your new smoke comp and drop it in just under your flash layer there it is set that to screen and now what you're going to do is start by masking it um, so grab kind of a circular elliptical mask and you can just work in the middle of your comp for now so you're going to just draw kind of an elliptical shape about that big just just smaller than your muzzle flash and then let's just tweak the shape of this mask to be a bit more conical in nature and a step forward a frame again so we can see what we're doing open the feather properties for this mask turn that feather right up and then make sure that the anchor point for your smoke is kind of in this this general area here because you want the smoke to kind of size up away from the barrel of the gun I'm going to move this smoke into position open up its rotation property a bit so here we go so I'm going to set a keyframe here behind the flash for scale at 100% then I'm going to step forward two frames one, two I'm going to scale it up to 200% and as I step through you'll see what this is kind of doing already now it's giving us this feeling that the smoke is emitting from that shot looking at it now the smoke tends to look a bit blocky in sections so I'm going to just go back to our smoke comp access the fractal noise properties in the effects panel and just turn the complexity up here to about let's try eight there we go back to our AK comp and then we want to go forward to the end of our comp set another keyframe say 300 percent and if I scrub again you can see what this is doing now the smoke grows in scale so all we really need to do now is play with the position and opacity of the smoke layer so let's start position somewhere here I'll open up push P for position keyframe it there scrub to the end and I will just drag it so it kind of floats up and away somewhere there you can see the effect it's giving so all we need to do now is address the opacity of the smoke layer and the color as it is emitted from the barrel it's nice and visible but at the moment it's probably a bit too strong so let's drop this 50 percent it's maybe a bit too weak let's say 65 and while we add it let's just address the color of the smoke so that it fits in better with our composite you can see we've got this kind of blue lens flare in the background here this kind of cool lighting so let's go and apply effect color correction 
hue saturation to our smoke layer and I'm going to click colorize. By default it colorizes it to this kind of pinky red. So our colorize hue, we just need to swing that around until it's in the blue palette that we want. Here we go, turquoise blue. So I want my smoke to be somewhere there. Um, I feel it's a bit too saturated, so let's pull our saturation down. Around there feels right to me. And then as it drifts off up to the top of our screen, we want it to fade off quite substantially. So I'm going to take it right down to kind of 20%, somewhere there. And if I RAM preview this for you, so there we go, a nice muzzle flash, followed by smoke. What we need to do next is create the smoke that would be thrown out of the breach over here. This is not a gas blowback airsoft gun, so the bolt does not move at all. Um, and that's something we will look at doing in part two of this tutorial. But seeing as though we're busy with smoke right now, we will go ahead and create the smoke for the breach over here. The smoke we've just done, I'm going to just label barrel smoke. And I'm going to go and grab that same smoke comp we created, drop it underneath barrel smoke. And again, I'm going to set it to screen. Seeing as though we've already colorized our barrel smoke, I'll just steal the colorize effect off that, copy it, and paste it onto our new smoke layer. And I will label this layer breach smoke, or you can call it bolt smoke, whatever makes sense to you. I'm going to work here in the middle of the layer and draw a small ellipse. And again, I'm going to just shape this ellipse so that it has a bit of a cone shape. I'm going to again move the anchor point to be in this area here so that when I scale it, it scales away from the sharpest cone edge. Let's just step forward to after our muzzle flash. There we go. And I'm going to hide this green mask so we can see what we're doing toggle mask display off access the feather properties for this mask turn it right up there we go and now I want to move this breech smoke layer to be around here coming out of the breech area maybe rotate it a bit so that it's up and away from the breech there we go and let me just trim the layer so that it starts here so we need to get the same animation going on this breech but in the opposite direction it's going to travel away from the breech and upwards so we'll start by setting a scale keyframe here, 100%. Step forward one frame this time, maybe two, um, and scale it up to sort of 200, the 200% area. What's that? 175. And again, let's set a position keyframe here in the beginning. Scrub to the end of our comp and set a position keyframe for it up here. And if I just RAM preview this, you can see the rough effect we're getting. So it appears and it drifts away. Access opacity for it. And right here in the beginning, we do want it to be quite visible. So I will take the opacity down to about 60 something, 50 something. And then we want the opacity to drop off really rapidly for this breach smoke. This kind of these hot gases that are expelled from the breach. Um, they're visible for a few frames and then they dissipate very quickly. So let's step forward maybe one, two, three frames. Try that and drop this opacity right down to kind of 10, 15%. And now if I RAM preview that, so you see there the blast from the breach is visible just for a few frames and then it dissipates very quickly. Right, so I have just quickly jumped ahead in time and what I've done is I've duplicated my muzzle flash. There we go. So I've just duplicated all my layers to create a second muzzle flash, a second barrel smoke and a second breech smoke. Um, now just a few quick pointers on that. You obviously don't want your two muzzle flashes to look identical. So what you generally do is you take the first muzzle flash, you duplicate it, place it where it needs to be and then you can just play with the evolution on the fractal noise to change the shape of it ever so slightly. You can see there as I, as I change the evolution on this flash, um, it changes the shape very slightly. The other thing you can obviously do to change the shape is manipulate the scale of this lens flare. So you can change its shape in the Y axis 
or in the x-axis. And then of course the third step is you can alter the shape of the mask. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And then one extra step that I'd like to point out is when our guy first fired his flash, he hadn't fired any other shots, so there was no smoke in the room yet. And then the gun expelled all the smoke, so obviously now his second flash needs to illuminate the smoke. So what I will do is as this second flash goes off, I'll grab my barrel smoke layer for the first shot. I will duplicate it. And it's already colorized. If you remember, we colorized it to a slight blue. So I'm going to just turn that saturation right up. And there we can see the blue. And I'm going to swing that to be in these kind of flamey orange yellow shades instead. Let's try the transfer mode to add rather. There we go. And then I want to trim that to just be one frame long. So it's only visible while the muzzle flash is up. So there we go, one frame. So if I ran preview the shot, we can see what we're getting. Very subtle, but I think quite effective. By varying the shape of your fractal noise and the settings in your glow effect, you can achieve a range of different looking muzzle flashes for a range of different weapons. For silenced weapons, you generally leave off the muzzle flash and allow the smoke to do the work. Right, so that brings part one to a close. We've looked at creating muzzle flash using fractal noise and creating smoke uh, using fractal noise. In the next step of our tutorial, we will move on to creating the ejecting brass shells that come from the gun as well as giving the bolt some action. Um, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman. Cheers.